Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So, spoiler season for Streets of New Capenna is just around the corner. I believe it's about two weeks from now. Regardless, we have some spoilers today, but not for that set, for the set after it for Commander Legends Baldur's Gate. Or I, I think the official name is actually Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate. There's a lot of sets and names lately. Regardless, on the official Magic Gathering stream yesterday, we saw some new exciting previews, and one of those really exciting ones that stood out to me was Elder Brain, which is an incredibly new, incredibly exciting, and incredibly brutal new card. So what does Elder Brain do, and why is it so brutal? Well, let's jump into it to find out. So, Elder Brain is a 6-6 horror, and, and yes, this art is pretty horrific, that has menace that costs 5 black black. It has, whenever it attacks a player, exile all cards from that player's hand, then they draw that many cards. You may play lands and cast spells from among the exiled cards for as long as they remain exiled. If you cast a spell this way, you may spend mana as though or mana of any color to cast it. So, this is a very spicy card, essentially replacing an opponent's hand with a completely separate hand and giving you access to their previous hand. Essentially, on attack, you wheel someone and say, those cards that you're getting rid of, th those are mine now. Again, do keep in mind that it does say you can play lands from those cards as well, so this can really help ensure that you're hitting land drops too if your opponents happen to have lands in their hand. But obviously, the more important factor here, though, is that you can cast spells from them. Now you have to pay for those spells. But that being said, obviously, this helps you fix your mana in kind of whatever way you need to to be able to cast those spells. Also, obviously, having Menace would be a good way to help get this through. And six damage isn't nothing. And more importantly, it can help it survive in combat. Because if your opponents actually want to block this, they're going to have to at least commit two creatures to do so. But yeah, that attack trigger can really throw a wrench into an opponent's plans if they've got things set up in their hand and they're ready to actually make some moves. And, and then you say, you know what, you, you just get a new hand. That old hand that you had, that's mine. And now I get to see exactly what your plans were and I get to actually utilize them myself. But of course, we also have some ways to make this attack trigger even better and even more brutal. Now the first card that I want to highlight is an extremely spicy card and pretty much any time I can find a card that pairs with this I really want to bring it up because Head Games is a fantastic card. Or should I say fantastic in combinations with cards like Elder Brain. It's a sorcery that says target opponent puts the cards in their hand on top of their library, search that player's library for that many cards, the player puts those cards in their hand then shuffles their library. So, essentially, you just sculpt that player's hand into whatever you want. Now, in just, you know, a normal situation, you'd probably give them a bunch of dead cards, maybe just some lands if they don't need lands, and yeah, now their hand is just completely gone and they've got useless cards in it. But obviously, with Elder Brain, it's going to be a different story. You just pay five mana and say, okay, how many cards you got in your hand? All right, six? Cool. I'm going to go search your library for the six cards that I personally want most, and then I'm attack with Elder Brain, and then those cards are mine. So you can essentially take away that player's access to their best cards in their deck, and you get access to those cards instead. Yeah, Head Games and Elder Brain is a very spicy combination, and I can definitely see these two being played together. Moving on, another way to take advantage of Elder Brain's attack trigger, and one that can be pretty brutal, is with cards like Underworld Dreams, Obnixilis the Hate Twisted, and Cataract Parasite. Underworld Dreams says when an opponent draws a card, Underworld Dreams deals one damage to that player, and the others essentially say the exact same thing, though Cataract Parasite says that you need a red permanent for this to happen. But yeah, basically, if an opponent draws a card, they get pinged for one. 
So let's say that a player has a full grip of cards and you swing at them with Elder Brain. Now they have to exile those seven cards. You get access to them. And on top of that, when they draw their new seven cards with that, you know, kind of wheel effect, essentially, they're getting pinged for seven damage. So on top of getting swung at by a massive brain, losing their hand, giving you access to their hand, they are also getting punished for drawing cards to replace their hand that is now gone. Nekusar would be proud. So that kind of is like rubbing salt in the wound of that opponent, and it can turn a pretty brutal effect already into an even more brutally awesome effect. But that's nowhere near the most brutal thing that you can do with this card. Because we can also take advantage of that opponent drawing cards with cards like Smothering Tithe, Psychic Possession, and Consecrated Sphinx. Smothering Tithe essentially says whenever an opponent draws a card, they can pay two. If they don't, you get a treasure. So on top of wheeling an opponent, essentially getting access to their hand, forcing them to draw a new hand, now when they draw those cards, they're being taxed. And if they don't pay that tax of two per card that they draw, you get treasure, which then allows you obviously to help cast the spells that they just gave you. So yeah, if you think Underworld Connections was rubbing salt into the wound, the Smothering Tithe has something to say about that. Now, of course, with that opponent, you can also join in the fun of drawing with a card like Psychic Possession. It's an aura that has Enchant Opponent. Skip your draw step. Whenever Enchanted Opponent draws a card, you may draw a card. So though you get to skip your draw step, you do get some massive advantages from this, especially when paired with something like Elder Brain. Again, when you swing, essentially exile that player's hand and get access to all those cards, and then they wheel and draw back to that amount, you are also drawing with them because whenever they draw a card, you draw a card. So again, if they're at a full grip of cards, they exile those seven cards, you get access to them, then they draw seven, and so do you. So now you get, what, 14 cards worth of card advantage from one swing? That player doesn't really gain any card advantage, they are back to the exact same spot that they were, and you get a ton of cards out of this deal. Speaking of which, of course, Consecrated Sphinx is another way to take advantage of this, a 4-6 flyer that says whenever an opponent draws a card, you may draw two cards. So again, in that exact same scenario, you're exiling seven cards that you get access to, they draw seven, you draw 14. So you just gain, what, 21 cards worth of card advantage? Now, obviously, I should mention that with these examples, it should be pretty apparent, but obviously you need to be in these colors in order to use these cards in combination with Elder Brain. That being said, let's move on to some even more brutal things that you can do. Because now it's time to talk about cards like Alms Collector and Notion Thief. Alms Collector is a 3-4 Cat Cleric with Flash that says if an opponent would draw two or more cards, instead you and that player each draw a card. So, you attack. They exile their seven cards. They would be drawing back up to seven, but Alms Collector says, no, let's not do that. You're going to be drawing two or more cards, so you just get to draw one. Oh, and by the way, I also get to draw one. So, you essentially just took that player's hand for yourself, said, here's one card in exchange, and I'll also get one card too. You just demolish their hand pretty much entirely, and with that, their hope is well. Speaking of which, in an even bigger way, there's Notion Thief, a 3-1 human rogue with flash that says if an opponent would draw a card except the first one they draw on each other's draw steps, instead that player skips that draw and you draw a card. So, whereas Alms Collector limits the amount of cards that you draw to one, Notion Thief says, you know what, all those extra cards they were going to draw on top of that first one, we get all those. So again, in that same scenario, that's going to be Exile 7, they would draw back up to 7, but they only draw 1, and then you draw 6 cards. So you demolish their hand and get an absurd amount of card advantage. Yeah, that's pretty brutal. Speaking of which, of course, you can also utilize even more brutal effects like Narset Parter of Veils, Spirit of Labyrinth, and Omen Machine. Narset says each opponent can't draw more than one card each turn. So again, this is not a symmetrical effect. You can still draw as many cards as you want, but your opponents are limited to just one. So instead of getting their entire hand replaced when you swing at them with Elder Brain, they just get one card back. Of course, you can also utilize a symmetrical effect if you really want to, like Spirit of Labyrinth, which says each player can't draw more than one card each turn. Again, although you are just limited to one extra card each turn as well, you are also getting a ton of card advantage by exiling your opponent's hands and getting access to them. Or in an even meaner way, maybe you can play Omen Machine, which says players can't draw cards. So now when you swing with Elder Brain, their entire hand is just gone, you get access to it, they can't draw any cards to replace it, and they can't draw any cards moving forward with this in play. 
Now, obviously, it also says at the beginning of each player's draw step that player exiles the top card of their library. If it's a land card, they put on the battlefield. Otherwise, the player casts about paying its mana cost available. So, yes, essentially, everyone's in top deck mode. Though, again, you are going to get access to players' hands with Elder Brain. So, unless an opponent can deal with this or they top deck something amazing, you're going to be in the driver's seat. Now, two other cards that I do want to mention that can take advantage of Elder Brain exiling those cards are cards like Sage of the Beyond and Vega the Watcher. Sage of the Beyond says, spells you cast from anywhere other than your hand cost two less to cast. So, since you are casting those spells from Exile, you get amazing cost reduction with this card. So, if you've got a deck that revolves around casting spells from places other than your hand, this and Elder Brain obviously might work really well in it. Speaking of which, another card that works very well with Elder Brain, though unfortunately it can't actually go into the actual deck for Vega the Watcher, though obviously they can both fit in the 99 of another deck. Regardless, Vega says, whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, draw a card. So, now when you cast those spells from Exile, again, you're already getting card advantage from being able to have access to those spells, but on top of that, you get a benefit from doing so in that you're gaining even more card advantage just for casting those spells. So again, just keep in mind that there are definitely ways to benefit from casting spells from outside your hand. But now let's move on and talk about some commanders that might want to utilize Elder Brain. The first one that came to my mind was Ishin to Heavens is One. This is a newer commander from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, and it's already making a big splash. There are a lot of players that are excited about it, and for good reason. It's a 3-4 that says if a creature attacking causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So now instead of just getting one Elder Brain trigger, you are getting two on that attack. So with that player that you're attacking, they are going to have to exile their entire hand, draw back up to that amount, exile that hand as well, then draw again. So you essentially get access to twice as many cards. Again, if someone's got a full grip, that's what, 14 cards you are exiling getting access to? So yeah, I can definitely see some Ishin decks out there utilizing this card. Next up, another popular commander that definitely might want to utilize this card is going to be Prosper Tomebound. Prosper is a 1-4 with Death Touch that says that at the beginning of your end step, exile the top card of your library until the end of your next turn you may play that card, and whenever you play a card from exile, create a treasure token. So Prosper is going to benefit you from casting things from exile, and Elder Brain is going to give you access to a lot of things by exiling them. So not only do you get card advantage with Elder Brain by getting access to your opponent's hands essentially, but now with Prosper, you're also getting temporary mana from those treasures that you're going to be creating when you cast those spells to help you cast even more spells spells to get more treasures, and you see where this is going. Moving on though, let's talk about Umbra's Fear Manifest, which is definitely going to want to take a look at Elder Brain. It's a 1-1 one, one that gets plus plus one for each card your opponents own in exile, and on top of that, whenever it or another nightmare or horror enters the battlefield under your control, target opponent exiles cards in the top of their library until they exile a land card. So many Umbra's decks out there are built in either nightmare or horror, or both tribal, and of course, Elder Brain is a horror as well. So just with it coming into play, you get to exile things off the top of an opponent's library, which then of course makes Umbris bigger. Speaking of which, it does say that it gets plus plus one for each card your opponents own in exile. Your opponents obviously still own their cards, so when you attack with the Elder Brain and you exile cards that you then get access to, you might have access to those cards, but your opponents still own them, so Umbris is going to grow from that as well. So yeah, I think a lot of Umbris decks out there are going to be considering Elder Brain. Another commander that's definitely going to want to take a look at Elder Brain is Arami of the Dead Tide. Arami is a 1-4 that has tap, exile cards from your graveyard equal to the number of opponents you have, target creature card in your graveyard gains Encore until end of turn, the Encore cost is equal to its mana cost. Again, Encoring means that you essentially exile the creature card and pay its mana cost, and for each opponent you create a token copy that attacks that opponent this turn if able, they're going to gain haste to the sacrifice from the end step, activate only as a sorcery. You know what's better than one Elder Brain attack trigger? Three Elder Brain attack triggers. So with this setup again by swinging out at your opponents, again you're swinging with what, three 6-6 six, six menaces so those can get through and dish out some damage a lot of the time, and of course more importantly, you are wheeling your opponents, getting access to all the cards that were in their hands, and now they have to replace those cards by just drawing back up to that amount. So get a mass amount of card advantage and throw a giant wrench into all of your opponents' plans. Yeah, Rami's going to enjoy this card. One final commander that I do want to bring up, though, is Marilyn of the Mornsong. It's a 2-3 elf wizard that says, Players can't draw cards at the beginning of each player's draw step. That player loses three life, searches their library for a card, puts it into their hand, then shuffles their library. 
Now I actually just highlighted Marilyn of the Morn song in a different episode where I talked about 96 lands and, you know, a combo that works around this, or, you know, you can actually just go get Agent of Treachery with this and essentially win the game from there by locking your opponents out. I just wanted to bring this up, though, because this is one of the very few cards, again, that does say players can't draw cards. So with this again, essentially like I mentioned with Omen Machine, when you do attack with Elder Brain, that player loses their hand, you get access to that hand, and they don't draw any cards to replace it. So yeah, there are even more brutal things that you can do with Marilyn of the Morn Song, but that's pretty brutal itself. But now as this episode is coming to a close, it's time for me to give you my final thoughts on Elder Brain. This is a very spicy card that has a good amount of applications out there. Though it does have a high converted mana cost, it can give you a ton of benefits and can really throw a wrench into your opponent's plans. It can be a brutal effect that you can make even more brutal, and at the very least, you're going to get a good amount of card advantage just by swinging with this. And of course, again, if you've got ways to take advantage of that attack trigger, whether again, it's, you know, not allowing your opponents to draw more cards or, you know, also getting additional benefits from them drawing cards. Yeah, this card can be incredibly brutal and incredibly powerful in the right scenario. But most importantly, at least to me, it works fantastically with head games, which is a hilariously fun card. And with that, this show is coming to a close, so it's my turn to hear from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again, and have a good one.